Jean, darling. Uh, haven't I got a birthday coming up soon? Mm-hmm. The 10th of May. Why? Well, if you're thinking of buying me a present, we could do with some new wine glasses. I've got your present already. What's wrong with the ones we've got? Well, they don't exactly match. There are uh, two claret, two uh, champagne type, three goblets with knobbly stems, one sherry glass and one beer mug. Have we got enough glasses? Mm, just. Well, don't see what you're worrying about then. Anyway, my birthday's before yours. Why don't you give me some glasses? Well, it so happens that I've bought your present too. Oh, that solves that one then. How about pouring me a gin and martini? Yes, of course, darling. A uh, gin and martini coming up. With ice. What would you like it in? Um, preferably not the beer mug. <laughs> Where did you put the serving spoons? Um, on the mantelpiece. Oh, here we are, darling. Thank you. Oh. Oh, how's the food? Oh, everything under control. Oh, hell. That'll be someone to say they can't come. Excellent 3592, hello? Hello, Maggie. Yes, of course, darling. No, no, I'm knocking back a martini. Really? Oh, he's as bad as Derek. Yes, yes, we'll expect you in an hour or so. No, 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 all right, darling. Mm-hmm. Right, see you. Bye. Who's as bad as Derek? Keith. Lost his way driving back from Bristol, so there'll be a few minutes late. Oh, that means the others will drink more while we're waiting. I could nip down to the off-license for another bottle of something. Oh, no, no, don't worry. There'll be ample. OK. I'll go and get the wine from the cellar. Uh, say that again. Hmm. The garage. <laughs> don't belong. Right. Oh, now what? Excellent 3592, hello. Oh, Eileen, darling. No, no, of course not. That's all right. Yes, Maggie just phoned. They'll be late as well. Did you? <laughs> no, she's out for the evening at the Pagetas. She's very friendly with a boy. Well, she is 14 now. Yes, our voices are alike over the phone anyway. That's sweet of you. See you then, about 8.30. Right. Bye. Oh, here we are. Two bottles of Chateau Godot, 1971. Who's that on the phone? Eileen. They're going to be a few minutes late, too. Babysitter trouble. You know how panicky she gets if things don't go exactly the way she wants them. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> she thought I was Carol when I answered the phone. Who did? Eileen. Oh, well, Eileen's always had trouble with her ears. And you'll get an airful of dry martini in a minute. <laughs> oh, who's that? Uh, it's all right, I'll go. Just in case it's a sex maniac, come to ravish you. If it is, darling, tell him to call again tomorrow about 11 o'clock. Just at the moment, I'm not in the mood. Now, I must go and look at the potatoes. Hello, Derek. Oh, hello, Paul. Um, uh, may I come in? Oh, yes, of course, I'm sorry. Uh, come in. Thanks. Is, uh, is Elaine with you? No. Oh. Uh, well, look, um, Jean's still busy in the kitchen. We, uh, well, we weren't expecting you quite yet, old man. Um, sorry, go on in. Uh, Who is it, darling? Uh, it's Paul. Paul? Oh, heavens, what's the time? Uh, it's uh, 20 past seven, I think. Hello, Paul. Hello, Jean. You'll have to excuse me. I'm right in the middle of cooking. Is Elaine with you? No, I'm on my own. Oh, well, I'll hear all about it in a minute. Darling, give Paul a drink or something. Oh, y yes, of course. Would you uh, like a drink uh, or something? Yes, I'd like a drink. Ah, well, what will you have? What have you got? Oh, let me see. There's uh, gin, whiskey, um, dry martini. Yeah, I'd like a scotch. Oh, right, scotch. Yeah, here we are. Would you like something with it? Uh, water? Uh, no, thanks. I'll have it just as it is. Right, here we are then. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Well, now, uh, have a seat. Uh, thanks. Where did you leave the car? In the road. 
Oh, wouldn't you like to bring it in? There's plenty of room in the drive. Except that the first in has to be uh, last out, you know. Oh, it'll be all right in the road. Uh, have you got a light? Uh, oh, yes, yes, we've got some matches somewhere. Oh, ah, yes. Thanks. Uh, will you have one? No, no, thanks. Still trying to give them up. Uh, good for you. <laughs> Is, uh, is Elaine all right? Why? Yeah, well, she isn't with you. Uh, that's true. But so, um, well, you know, I just wondered if she was all right. Oh, you could say she's all right. As far as I know, her mind is at rest. Ah. So she'll be round later, then, eh? Ah, no, I don't think that's likely. No, most unlikely, in fact. But why is she ill? Look, we'd better tell Jean. Oh, no, don't tell Jean just yet. Let her get on with her cooking. I shouldn't want her pastry to sag. But is she ill? Who? But Elaine. Oh, no, 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 she's not ill. Uh, let's say she's incapacitated. Hello, Paul. Uh, Hello. Uh, Sorry I couldn't stop and talk earlier. Where's Elaine? Paul says she can't come. Can't come? Huh. She's, um, uh, what do we say, uh, incapacitated. What do you mean, incapacitated? What's happened to her? Is she ill? Has she had an accident? Well, strictly speaking, she hasn't had an accident. Oh, so she's all right? Mm, you could say she's all right. I think her mind is at rest. Well, where is she then? Where is she? For God's sake, Paul, tell us exactly where she is and why she can't come tonight. Now, let the dog see the rabbit. Let's take one question at a time, if you don't mind. Right. Where is Elaine? Ah, yes. Where is Elaine? Now, that is a question that might have several answers, all of them correct from a particular viewpoint, and none of them perhaps very helpful. The main reason being a divorce... Divorce? Oh, Elaine hasn't left you. A divorce between body and soul, between the flesh and the spirit. Paul, what are you talking about? Look, Paul, will you stop beating about the bush and tell us, where was Elaine when you last saw her? She was in the car. Is she in the car now? Uh... You could say that. You mean she's in your car now? Uh, where's the car? It's outside. In the, uh, no, wait a minute. Do you mean you've left her in the car outside? Yes. Oh, why didn't you bring her in? You can bring her in now. I don't think that would be a good idea. Oh, Look, yeah, earth not. Stop beating about the bush. Now go and bring Elaine in or I'll go and get her myself. Ah, now I wouldn't advise you to do that. Why not? Uh, Sorry, I don't understand this at all. We've known you and Elaine for five years. She's my best friend. You turn up here for dinner one hour early, looking rather dishevelled, and then you tell us that Elaine is in the car outside and that you don't think it would be a good idea to bring her in. So what's the matter? Have you quarrelled or something? No, I think I can say truthfully that we haven't quarrelled. Well, then, why can't you bring her in? No, I didn't say I couldn't bring her in. Yes, you did. No, with all due respect, I did not. I said I didn't think it would be a good idea. Why not? Yes, why not? She's dead. dead. Good God. But, but you mean, how did... No, wait, wait a minute. You, you mean Elaine is in the car, dead? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, you're joking. Well, this isn't... Well, I mean... Look, you just can't sit there and expect us to believe that you, Elaine... You, 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 you must be joking. Why? It has to happen to all of us sooner or later. I never thought of Elaine as being immortal. You really mean that Elaine is dead? I see the message is beginning to get across. But Paul, if she is... Oh, oh you poor darling. What an awful shock. And the, and the children. This is absolutely <laughs> ghastly. How did it happen? Was it an accident? I told you already it wasn't an accident. It was more of a, a misadventure. I, I just can't believe it. Not Elaine... What happened? Now, listen, never mind what happened. Uh, are you absolutely sure she's dead? Quite sure. Well, she may have fainted or had a heart attack. A or... heart attack? Uh, at 34? Look, it does happen. I'm going out to have a look for myself. She, she's probably fainted. Oh, please. No, it's all right. Don't worry, darling. I'll go and see. There's no point. I know she's dead. How long ago did this happen? Oh, about half an hour ago. Derek, we must get a doctor, an ambulance. Yes. Uh, dial 999, darling. Tell them there's been an accident. There's no point, I tell you. There'd be infinitely more point in offering me another scarf. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, all right, darling, pour Paul another drink, will you? Oh, you better have one as well. In fact, I think we'd all better have one. No, well, I I've still got a martini somewhere in the kitchen. All right, I'll go and get it. 
Pour, pour yourself another whiskey. And pour one for me as well. I, I just can't believe it, Paul. Elaine, of all people. Do the children know? Have you told them? Where are the children? The children are at home. Elaine's mother's down for the weekend. She's what she likes to call looking after them, for some reason which I can never fathom. Does she know? Uh, here's your martini, darling. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm going out to the car now. Oh, is that my whiskey? Yes. Would you like some water with it? All right. Uh, no. Uh, yes. Uh, no, 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 just give it to me. Thank you. I don't think you should go out to the car. It's getting rather dark. What's that got to do with it? Elaine is very dead. In the dim twilight, you might get quite a shock when you see her. She is no longer the gorgeous and beguiling creature she was an hour ago. She is now a bloated corpse. Oh, God, how can you talk about your wife in that way? You're forgetting I haven't got a wife. Not any longer. I am a widower of half an hour's standing, and with ice-cold detachment, I am reporting facts. But, Paul, how did it happen? Did you hit a lamppost or a tree? Was she thrown through the windscreen? Oh, no, not Elaine. She was a great one for belting up. In the literal sense of the word only, though. Uh, listen, Paul, this is a terrible shock for all of us. And for you. N now, listen. I'm listening. Mm. This really is very good scotch. But look, we must call an ambulance. It's all very well for you to say that she's dead, that Elaine's dead, but you aren't a doctor. You have to get expert help to her at once. Go on. So, will you let me get a doctor? I've told you already, she is beyond anybody's help. Of that, I'm absolutely sure. How can you be sure? Well, I'll let you into a secret. I'm absolutely sure because I made absolutely sure. I killed her. You what? Killed her. Oh, no. Oh, no, you, you don't mean that. You killed her? Why not? Someone had to do it. I was the man on the spot, the obvious candidate for the job. But why? Look, if it will stop you asking all these tedious questions, I'll tell you all about it. Oh, oh God, something's burning. Look, wait a minute. Look, darling, there are more important things. Not at all, Derek. Jean is right. Life must go on. We have to eat. Let the dead bury their dead. Let the living tend their spuds. Why let them burn? It's all right now. Well, Paul... Tell us everything. Very well. This afternoon, Elaine and I went out shopping, leaving the children to the tender mercy of her mother, or vice versa. We visited the library, where we both took out a book to read in bed. After we'd left and were walking back to the car, Elaine made a remark. It was an innocent remark, a thoughtless remark, a fatal remark, as it turned out. It took me a little while to realize its significance. While we were driving home, I asked her to explain it. She didn't want to, so I stopped the car and told her what I thought the remark meant. And as she didn't seem to have any satisfactory answer to some of the questions I put to her, I decided she had to die. Uh, wait a minute, Paul. When you say you killed her, you mean you killed her accidentally? You, you didn't kill her deliberately? Well, I tried to do it as painlessly as I could, with improvised equipment. I didn't want her to suffer. I loved Elaine very much, you know. Go on. Now, I always keep a large spanner on the parcel shelf of the car, in case I ever get hijacked. Elaine decided she wanted to get out of the car. She undid her seatbelt and opened the door. We were on a very quiet road. While her head was turned away from me, I hit her hard. Very hard on the back of the neck with the spanner. God. She fell sideways half out of the car, so I pulled her in again and shut the door. She was still breathing, but she was unconscious. Well, if we go out now... So I then pulled off her tights and tied them very tightly indeed round her neck. Then I refastened her seat belt, uh, partly in deference to what I felt sure would have been her own wishes, and partly to stop her falling sideways onto me when we went round corners. I started to drive home, but then I thought I'd better call and let you know I'd be coming on my own for dinner tonight. By the time we got here, Elaine had stopped breathing and her face was a most unattractive colour, not far off the sickly hue of her eyeshadow. I decided that she was well and truly dead. I carefully untied her tights and put them in my pocket. 
Here they are. Oh, God. Well, that's my story. I hope I haven't bored you. Well, I'd better go home now and shave and change. I'll be back in about half an hour. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm Paul, looking forward to the meal. Uh, it smells delicious already. No, Paul, no, no. You, you mustn't go. You stay here. You look perfectly all right as you are. Are you sure? Yes, yes, quite sure. Well, if you insist, thank you. It'll mean I shan't have to meet Elaine's mother just yet, and that's a penance avoided. Uh, can I use your bathroom? Oh, yes, yes, of course. And um, use the upstairs one. Oh, would you like me to come with you? What? Well, will you, uh, will you be all right? Now, look, old man, I've been going to the bathroom on my own now for about 37 years. Yes, I know, I... I just wonder. Oh, don't worry, I shan't write naughty words on the mirror in toothpaste, and I shan't try to commit suicide by cutting my wrists with your razor blade. I've got an electric razor. So there isn't any danger of letting me go to the bathroom on my own, is there? Look, I didn't mean that. Well, I shan't be long. Uh, you'll understand. It's the scotch. Oh, quite. Oh, darling, listen. I, I can't believe anything he's told us is true. But you'll have to go out to the car and see if Elaine's... No, oh, if Elaine's there... Do be quick. Then we'll have to phone the police. Will you be all right? Uh, alone with him, I mean. I think he's dangerous. Oh, yes. Well, I'll, I'll lock myself in the downstairs loo and, uh, just until you get back. Must be mad. It must be mad. He's mad if he's telling the truth and he's mad if he isn't. Where's the car? Oh, that is. Is it? Oh, yes, it must be. There's no sign. I can't... There's no one in the passenger seat. What's that? I know, just a shadow. Not on the floor. The car's empty. Oh, I got the boot. There's nothing in there. She's not here. I wonder... Well, perhaps she managed to crawl away. Perhaps she isn't dead. Perhaps... Perhaps she didn't kill her. He's been telling lies all the time. <laughs> I must get back. Jean. She, she's not there. There's nobody in the car. Oh. I think he's been having us on, just telling lies. She isn't in No, no, the car's empty. Oh, now, now, come on, Jean, darling. Now, pull yourself together. Come and finish your drink. Oh, God. Why did he have to come here and, and, and tell us all these lies? I don't know. I think he must be, well, you know, a bit... Uh... Where is Elaine, then? Well, she'll be at home with the children, getting ready. Oh, darling, I, I've got to ring her just, just to talk to yes, her. It's all right. Would you like me to get her for you? No. Oh, listen. He's coming down. Yeah. Now, you keep him talking, and I'll creep upstairs and use the phone in the bedroom. I, I, I'll just whip through the kitchen, right? Okay. Oh, hello, Paul. Uh, Everything okay? Oh, yes. Uh, feeling much relieved. <laughs> How are things on the lower deck? Jean in the galley again, I see. Yes. Well, uh, you could say that we're much relieved as well. But uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, uh, look, uh, Paul, I've, uh, I've just been out and had a look in your car. There's no body in it. Nobody? Or no body? Oh, come on, don't sit there making wisecracks. Your car is standing outside quite empty. I believe you've been lying to us. Now, why? All right, I won't deny it. I've been lying to you. Now, wait a minute. I, I want Jean to hear you say that. Jean, darling. What is it? Paul's got something to tell you. Oh. Well? Tell Jean what you just told me. I'm afraid I've been lying to you. Oh. Oh, I, I knew it couldn't be true, any of it. But but why tell all those lies? Uh, now, hold on a bit. I lied to you, but only in one small particular. When I said that Elaine was in the car, I will admit that, but that's all. After I was sure Elaine was dead, I opened the door and she fell out onto the grass verge, very slowly. With a funny noise, a sort of flop. Then I shut the door and drove round here. Where was this? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got much of a memory for geography. Anyway, by now, some old codger will probably be trying to haul his pooch away from a shapeless bundle, which, on investigation, will turn out to be no less than the mortal remains of my ex-wife, Elaine, 
the void now of grace, eloquence, charm, her life's breath, and her tights. Help! People cry in a loud, though quavery voice. In response to a complaint from the residents, our gallant boys in blue will hasten up in their little panda car and will commence to identify Elaine by such clues as her handbag may provide. Then they may well dispatch one of their number round to her home address to ask if anyone has missed her. Well, you don't know whether to believe me or not, do you? I'm going to phone up your house to see if she's there. Go ahead. Elmstone, 3742. Ring twice and ask for Elaine. See if she's available tonight. Since her husband isn't at home, she may well be. Oh, do stop it. Be quiet. The phone's ringing. Uh, there you go. But do you think I could have another drink? I would get up and get one myself and save you the journey, but I seem to be suffering from a slight dizziness of the knees. Yes, all right. There's no reply. Well, dial the number again. You might have been calling the wrong number. All right. I'll, I'll try again. At number 48 Ashburn Drive, the phone will be ringing in the hall and Christine and Jonathan and Helen will be asleep upstairs, each dreaming of ice creams and crisps and Milky Ways. Real little guzzlers, my kids. Not to be wakened out of a honeyed sleep by the inedible ring of a telephone bell. And then my mother-in-law will be stuck in front of the telly, deaf as the post, knitting her 183rd horse blanket. If they send the policeman round, he'll have to break the door down to get her attention. There's still no reply. I, I don't know what to think. Well, she may be in the bath or something. I, I think I ought to drive round and see. Do you mean you intend to go around and see if my wife is in the bath? Perhaps I should explain. I'm not a brides in the bath killer. I'm just one of your common garden thump and strangle brigade. She's lying stiff and dead in the gutter, is my Elaine. Stark, but not Starkers. She's not in any bath, nor as far as I know is she on the end of any telephone. Well, let's all have another drink, shall we? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, I think I could do it one too. Darling? No, no, it would make me sick. Well, if you want to go and cast an eye over the fool, dear old hostess with the mostest, feel free. You don't mind me. Don't mind me, feel free. Oh, no, for heaven's sake, Paul, forget about the food. Oh, shame, shame. Hardly the Dunkirk spirit. Let, look. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, Paul. Mm. Derek? Will you let me run you home? Look, dear old volunteer chauffeur, I don't want to be run home now or later. When the time comes, I shall drive myself in my own car, under my own steam, and in my own good time. Well, we, we just can't sit here as if nothing had happened. I think we should phone the police and tell them that we want them to come round and find out whether what you've said is true. I see. Do you think that what I've said is true? Now, obviously, some of it wasn't true. The bit about Elaine being in the car, for example. But some of what you've said may be true. I just don't know. Anyway, true or not, you're now about to chuck me out. You want me safely out of the way before your other friends arrive. Nor do I blame you. I should probably embarrass your guests and say rude things about the custard. So I should go in a moment and leave you in peace, if peace is the right word for it. On the other hand, why should I leave you in peace? Give me one reason. Very well. What have either of us ever done to you? We've been your friends now for five years. So, when I'm in trouble, when in a fit of insane anger I kill my wife, I turn to you as avowed friends of my wife and myself, what do I find? Incomprehension, disbelief, and a threat to call in the coppers. All right, go ahead, call the police. With any luck, they'll pay you 30 bob for the tip-off. But don't come to me to borrow Elaine's tights to hang yourself with when remorse sets in. Anyway, what are you going to tell them? You haven't any evidence apart from my story. How are you going to convince them? I don't know, but we just can't sit here talking. Why not? Half the population of the planet spends most of its time talking. We don't talk enough, that's our trouble. 
always too busy rushing here, rushing there. So I don't see why we shouldn't sit and talk now. Because you've got lots to talk about. Do you know what strikes me as funny? What? You haven't asked me yet why I killed Elaine. All right, then. What, what, why did what, Why? Listen to me while I tell you. For about two months now, I've been worried about Elaine. She hasn't been herself. She seemed perfectly all right to me. Ah, maybe to you, but not to me. I've been studying her closely. And she hasn't been acting true to form. Now, now take an example. A few nights ago, I touched a little curl at the back of her neck. Nothing affectionate. It was just a smallish spider crawling on it. I was quite prepared for the usual, what the hell do you think you're doing? Don't you know I had it set yesterday? But nothing of the sort. She turned her head quickly, and she was smiling in a vacant sort of way. Then she saw me looking surprised and was quite not. What the hell? And so on. She didn't even soften when I explained about the spider. And another thing, she suddenly came by a new perfume. Uh, nothing obvious. Not enough to overpower the budgie, you know. <laughs> Very discreet, in fact. Squirts it behind her ears. And what's more, she's taken to humming. Uh, no particular tune, not particularly tuneful, but humming nonetheless in the morning before breakfast just when the auditory ganglia are at their most raw last day. As far as I can make out, it all adds up to one thing. What? I'll tell you. Another man. Oh, that's nonsense. You're talking rubbish. Elaine wasn't like that at all. She never told you she had a boyfriend? No. Or said anything that might make you suppose she had a boyfriend? Never. Oh, well. A best friend. Well, women usually tell someone about their admirers. Who, if not their best friend? And if not the best friend, why not? Paul, I think this is all in your imagination. Well, it isn't easy to sort out the real things in life from the imaginary ones. So, I thought I'd try some experiments. Experiments? Mm. One afternoon, I phoned her from the office. It's a thing I never do normally. The result was rather interesting. What do you mean? Well, I imagine you must have heard Elaine answering the phone, the train secretary to her fingertips, all brisk efficiency. Help zone 3742, and who the hell are you? Putting your tuppence and state your business. Well, on this occasion, what she said was, Hello? <laughs> well, the way her voice changed when she found out it was me at the other end was quite incredible. So who did she think it was going to be? Well... Probably she was expecting a call from a mother or from another woman friend. The obligations of a guest prevent me from making an appropriate comment on that one. But then I tried a much deeper sub subterfuge. One morning last week at breakfast, I, I let it be known casually that she'd been talking in her sleep. And now, Elaine never blushes. It is a cornerstone of her face or something. But last Wednesday morning, as soon as I mentioned talking in her sleep, she went a sunrise pink about the ears, and a wild look came into her eyes. So what? I expect I'd blush if Derek tells me I'd been talking in my sleep. Doubtless. I'm very fetching you to look too, my love. But there's more to come. Mm. Uh, talking of more to come, is there any scotch left in the bottle? Uh, yes, there's a little. Only a little. Oh, then leave it there. I feel horribly sober, but I shall have to bear with it. Now, get an earful of this in my heart. Is it? Uh, did I tell you that Elaine had taken the humming? Yes. Is it? Right. Now, while I was listening to her humming about uh, three weeks ago last Wednesday, it struck me that I didn't remember her humming the day before. And she didn't hum the day after, which was Thursday. But she did on the next day, Friday. And the following week, the same. So I thought, it's funny, that. Why Wednesdays and Fridays only? Why not Tuesdays or Saturdays? So, I began to look into Elaine's weekly program. What happens on Wednesdays and Fridays only, besides humming? Do you know? No. I know. On Wednesdays and Fridays, she goes out. 
On Wednesdays, it's bridge, and on Fridays, flower arranging. Oh, well, that explains the humming. She's looking forward to getting out of the house for a change. Because, while at this, humming was new. So once again, I made discreet inquiries. For five weeks now, on Wednesdays and Fridays, my dear and devious Elena has turned out of the house at the usual hour, having dumped baby Helen on the neighbours, and has driven off into the blue for a couple of hours, because she hasn't been bridging and she hasn't been flower arranging. Well, perhaps she's been going to the cinema. Ah, the cinema. Yes, yes I thought of that. But although Elaine is, uh, was, no mean performer between the sheets, she would hardly be humming at the prospect of sitting through two and a half hours of sisters in sex retained for a fifth great week. Uh, I seem to be out of cigarettes. I've got some more in the car. I'll get them for you. Thank you, but I'm also capable of going to the car on my own. Uh, have no fear. I shall be back. Derek, I'm going to phone again from the bedroom. All right. I'll wait here for Paul. Now, be quick. God, I, I, I can't think of our number. 3742. What? 3742. Oh, it, how do you know? What? How do you know it's 3742? Well, uh... You've never phoned Elaine, have you? Of course not. Then how do you know her telephone well, number? Paul told us Elmstone 3742. You have got a very good memory suddenly. What are Elaine's children called? I don't know. Ah, but you did know the telephone number. Yes. Why? Well, I'm better at numbers than names. It's all to do with introversion. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand that. Now, look, if you don't phone soon... Dan, here he is now. Oh, it's cold out. Can I have a light? Paul, won't you let us call a doctor? What the hell for? I've told you Elaine's dead. No, no, not for Elaine, for you. I don't need a doctor. Doctors can't do anything for me. I'll be all right sitting down for a while. Look, I think you ought to let me drive you home. I've said no. Can't but just sit down. I haven't finished telling you about Elaine yet. Just another five minutes, then I'll go. Well, if you promise not to drag it out... I shall be succinct as itself. It's warm in here. Are we all sitting comfortably? Good. <clears throat> now... As I saw it, Elaine had met some man who gave her some decent perfume and so forth. Now, some will say good luck to her. Many a good man and true keeps his wife fit and contented by turning a blind eye to her little adventures. But not me. I still love Elaine. I married her in the old-fashioned way, for better, for worse, till death us do part. And that's how I intend to keep it. So if she had been doing the crafty dodge on me, one of us had to die. But first of all, I was curious to know who the other fellow was. It could have been someone she'd met in a supermarket, but it didn't seem likely. Much more likely to be someone we both knew. Why is that more likely? Well, Elaine has a strong family instinct. Always a very close-knit family of hers. I was her brother's best friend for years. Elaine was like a little sister to me. Right from the age of 14, she never had another boyfriend. So, I said to myself, if Elaine's found someone else, she won't have gone very far to look. Probably her friend's husband. After all, most men have affairs with their friend's wives. Why not the other way around? I don't follow So that. I bided my time, kept my eyes and ears open, and today, bingo, the jackpot. Well, I'll tell you just how it happened. Elaine stopped outside Evans, the gift shop in Duke Street, as we were on our way from the library to where we had parked the car, and we looked at the things in the window, all very pretty and very expensive. And one of the little bits of pottery caught my eye, a rather seductive little figurine. I said as much to Elaine, who said, Oh, yes, isn't it sweet? It's Norwegian. So naturally, I said, How do you know? Oh, said Elaine, Derek bought one for Jean's birthday. Who, oh, me? But don't mention it tonight because it's a surprise. So naturally, I said, how do you know? Oh, she said, he told me the last time we were around for drinks. Oh, yes, of, yes, of course, that's right, I remember. She, she had mentioned the shop, and, and I told her to have a look at them. So I reason. thought very hard, and as far as I could remember, the last time we came round for drinks was about a month ago, nearly. Anyway... 
While Elaine was busy fingering the stock in the boutique next door, I slipped into Evans and asked about the Norwegian range. Oh, yes, very pretty, selling well, a new line. Came in two weeks ago. Oh, no, no, it's been much longer than that, at least a month or five weeks. So I mentioned this to Elaine, who became very vague all of a sudden. I let it drop for a bit while I mulled it over. And by the time we were driving home, I told her what I knew and what I suspected. And when I'd finished, she didn't seem to react in any way at all. She just looked out of the car window. And then I asked her if it was true. And then she turned and looked at me, and I could see in her eyes that it was true, and that she was tired of it. Well, I couldn't bear losing her like that. So I took the spanner, and she tried to get out of the car, and I hit her, as I told you. And that's the truth about Elaine. Well, I've got to go now. Oh, no, no. Thanks for the scotch and for listening to me. You've been a very good audience, very attentive. Uh, please apologise to all your other nice guests on behalf of Elaine and myself. Uh, do you mind if I use your bathroom before I go? Uh, now, listen, Paul. You still want to come with me? No. Well, I've got to go. In all senses of the word, all systems go. I'll let myself out. telephone number. Have you bought me a piece of Norwegian pottery for my birthday? I bought it a month ago. Look, I've explained about the telephone number. The man's completely mad, right round the bend. I thought he sounded quite compos mentis. It all fits together, you know, Derek. You haven't been quite yourself lately. Are you going to believe the hallucinatory ravings of, of the, that lunatic? He didn't rave. Well... And you can always get away from your office for an hour or two in the afternoon. Look, I have not seen Elaine since they last came round for drinks. He thinks the husband does protest too much. Uh, what was that perfume? Oubigan? Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh. oh, my God. Well, answer it. Uh, yes, yes, all right. Hello? Elaine, are, are you all right? Elaine, give me the phone. Elaine? Oh, darling, are you all right? Ye yes, he's here. He's upstairs at the moment in the bathroom. Oh, darling, we've had the most terrible time. Utterly devastating. I must keep a spare toothbrush somewhere. Hmm. No, nothing doing. Oh, I have to use this one. Looks reasonably clean. Mm. Mm. Ah, that's better. Who is fit to wait upon the Lord? He that hath clean hands and teeth and a pure heart. I wonder if I ought to take my tie off. Hmm, better leave it on. Probably won't make any difference to the end result. I wonder what knot I should use. I don't want the thing to come undone at the crucial moment. I might break a leg or something humiliating like that. Ah, uh, that should do. <clears throat> Portrait of a man with a pair of tights knotted round his neck. I wonder how much these things stretch. There's a tire loop about here. There. That should do it. Just big enough to fit over the banisters at the top of the stairs. 
Must have everything organized and ready. Don't want any fool rushing to the rescue at the last minute and spoiling everything. Hope the banisters haven't got a wood one. Oh, Elaine. 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 <laughs> it's cold up here. Oh, God, let's get it over. Nobody about. Softly. Softly. Don't want to disturb anyone. There. Hope that holds. Now, one leg over. Uh, hold on tight. Now, uh, the other leg. Lower gently by the arms to full stretch. I wonder if it's true about all your past passing in front of your eyes in the last second. Let's find out. I'm afraid the food is quite spoiled. I'll have to telephone the others and tell them it's off. No, I, I can't think why he did it. A pack of untruths from beginning to end. And making the most awful allegations about you and Derek. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about it later. About ten minutes, then? Good. See you, darling. Bye. Ah, well, Elaine's coming right away. Oh, good. She says she must have been in the bath when we phoned. She was wondering where Paul had got to. He went out to get some cigarettes, apparently, about two hours ago. She's getting Chris from next door to drive her over. Now, look, darling, we must get hold of Maggie and Eileen and tell them it's off. I just couldn't face them now. Do you think this time? I'll give them a ring. Oh, uh, what are you going to do about the food? Oh, I couldn't eat a thing, but I can probably find something. Uh, what's Maggie's number? Don't you know? You knew Elaine's. I explained that. And I'm not so sure I accept uh, your explanation. Look, if Paul really believed that Elaine had been deceiving him, he might well have done her in somehow. Remember what he said about him, until death us do part and so on. But Elaine isn't dead. I think he invented the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I was only teasing, darling. Give me a kiss. <laughs> mm. I wonder why Paul did tell us all that long rigmarole. By the way, where is he? Oh, forget about him just for a minute. Um, what's Maggie's number? Uh, 7428. Right, 7428. Look, you go ahead with the food. What'll I tell her, by the way? Oh, anything. The place is on fire. There's been a death in the family. Oh, look, you can't say that. Uh, I'll just say that uh, there's been a sudden domestic crisis. You can explain it all to her when you see her. Mm -hmm. uh, seven... Oh, darling, you better put out some more drinks. Four, I think we could all do with one. Three, I'll go and rustle something three, up for a sweet, OK? Right. Oh, hello. Oh, is that Maggie? It's Derek. 